Hey folks, it's E-Chip out in the shop, and uh, I have a nice piece of hickory here. I also have a leftover piece of uh, quarter inch thick plywood. And what I'm gonna do today is build two soap making molds. First thing I did was I planed this down to three quarters of an inch thick, but as you can see, the ends are not uh, planed or joined. So I'm gonna run those through the joiner over here. And, uh, but I think I'll cut these to approximate length or shorter length or something first, because, uh, you know, trying to run a big board through that six inch planer is not easy. It could tip and stuff like that. Easier to work with shorter boards. So I'll do that first. And you'll see that roller right there. Uh, you know, if you don't have an outfeed table uh, for your shop, this is the second best thing. If you're working with long pieces, it helps keep things, you know, stable and a little safe while you're working. It's not perfect, and those things can tip. I know this one does sometimes, but, you know, it's better than nothing. One other thing you'll notice on my saw is that I've installed a riving knife or a riving knife. Uh, I mean, people generally call them riving knives. But uh, what this does is it keeps the wood separated after it's been cut so that it doesn't bind back together, bind the saw, and kick the wood back uh, into your gut or into your face. So uh, that's my table saw setup. And by the way, on this saw, you cannot have a blade guard uh, set up with the riving knife. It's just not the way it's made. design for these soap molds um, you're gonna have uh, for one mold you'll have two long side pieces and two short end pieces and then you'll have a bottom uh, in the ends of the two long sides you'll see that you will drill holes and those holes will screw the sides together to hold the thing together also you'll notice this dotted line here and this one here represents a quarter inch uh, a dado that is cut into the wood to receive this quarter inch thick bottom and that'll go all the way around the side sort of help hold it together uh, real well in addition I will cut a three-quarter inch uh, wide and quarter inch thick dado in two in the ends of the long pieces that will receive this piece of wood and sort of lock it in there uh, so and here's a here's a side view from the edge that's sort of what it look like but uh, that'll receive this piece on edge and interlock the whole thing. So I will uh, leave a description of the measurements, uh, the pieces and the measurements uh, in the description below in case you wanna make a salt mold uh, for yourself. You could do this with a router or a router table um, you could, uh, and a table saw. But if you don't have a router or a router table, you can do this work with just a table saw. Now, on the directions, we saw that we need four pieces that are 12 inches long. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go about uh, 12 and a half on each of these. Just make the rough cut uh, because I'll make a finished cut later. I just want to get these short enough so I can run them through the planer and through the saw more easily. As this feeds through, it's going to be taking little bits of wood from the bottom here. So as you're going through. This table is actually a tiny bit higher than this side. See, just a tiny bit higher to account for what you're cutting. So as it goes through, uh, you know, there's a tendency as this wood goes through, as it gets to the end to, as it comes off this table, it'll fall down in there a little bit and snipe off the end of the wood. And you want to avoid that if you can. Uh, so when you're feeding the wood through a joiner, put most of your pressure on this side of the blade, if you have to put pressure, even pressure is best, but if you must put pressure on the wood as you're feeding it through to keep it flat and straight, then this is the side of the blade that you wanna be doing that. Safety glasses. clean 
side. Let's do that again. This time I'm going to turn the wood this way. Again, nice, clean, cut, and square at 90 degrees. Now I can take these pieces of wood, run them through there along the fence again, get my final width, less about a 30 second of an inch, run this edge through the planer, the freshly cut one, and I'll have my perfect width. Okay, anytime you're gonna do cross cutting on a table saw, you need some kind of support in the way of a square or a cutting jig, you know, panel cutting jig or something like that for cross cuts. And you don't wanna cross cut, you don't wanna use a fence. Because if you use a fence, the piece of wood can get in here and can bind between the fence and the blade and can cause damage to you or the saw. Uh, oftentimes it's you that suffers, not the saw. What this does is it steadies the work all the way across its length so that you don't need a fence to rest it against. And uh, you can get precision cuts. Uh, this, is, this square is made by a company called Osborne and I absolutely love this square. I've had it for years. It's been an awesome tool. It's very accurate once you set it up and it just does not go out of square. Um, yeah, every time I check it, it's just fine. You, you know, so I, I just checked it again and it's just fine. I don't, they just make a really good square. Now I'm going to make the final cuts on these, uh, before I cut the dados. I have my, my square set at 12 inches, which is the final cut length of these pieces. And there's the stop marking 12 inches, but I'm going to lift it up for the moment and I'm going to just place the board against the square and just get it close to the saw blade and and just we're just going to take off a little bit right here to square up this edge of the board uh, so we have a good square end and then I'm going to lift it up set it over here put the fence down okay line it up with my fence all right, set it against my stop, I mean. And then we'll make the final cut over here at the saw blade. Then we'll have two square ends at the length we want. And there, as you can see, is my nice square cut. Now, you'll notice I was kind of slow going through this is hickory, it's hard wood, and I do have a sharp blade, but if you go through nice and slow, you'll get less tear out on this wood because it does tend to chip. And um, also, it's, you know, it's just not as hard on your blades and stuff. So. All right, now, we flip the fence down, turn our pieces over. So we have a nice square piece against the stop, the fence stop, okay? And you can see we're against the stop. And we'll cut this to final length, 12 inches. Resist the temptation to go touch that piece of wood. And we have four pieces of wood, cut square. Okay, well. <laughs> The router has decided to take a powder. I thought I remembered there was a problem with this router. It's just a, it's an old, old router that I had, and I think I burned it up. I just can't remember. But I have another one back there, but I just don't want to dig it out. So let's do this the old-fashioned way. Let's use a table saw. Uh, pretty easy to do this. I have, you know, we've got our square here. All I need to do is run the stop to one inch from the end, which is 11 inches, and then work my way in. I've set my saw blade to a quarter inch deep. Um, so, here we go. What I'll do now is take the fence, move this in an eighth of an inch, or take the stop, move it in an eighth of an inch, make another cut on all these boards, and uh, just keep working that way until I get to a thick uh, a width of this dado equal to the thickness of one of these. So, Okay, so I finished the cuts. As you can see, I have a little bit left over in there. If you don't have a chisel, you can use a flat screwdriver to clean it out. But really, all you need to do is just sort of clean that out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just, you know, we're just doing sort of a quick thing here so we can make some soap. And yet, this is out of hardwood, so it'll last a long, long time. 
um, this, this will be getting to just prime this right out. No big deal. No big deal. So clean these out. And then I think what you'll find is a piece of wood, a nice square piece of wood will fit in there quite nicely. You can put that together and make your soap. Okay, now there we have our long sides pretty much ready to go, except we need to make that one dado down here that receives the bottom. So we'll cut that next. say e chip how come when you were cutting this dado you had your hand right on top of that board uh well and you didn't use a push stick well and that's because i know that the cut's not going all the way through the board as long as i kept my fingers away from the end here i was pretty safe just holding it flat and pushing it through that's why okay test fit the first one and that <clears throat> that's fine so i'll clean these out We'll move on to the next step. So we've got these cleaned out and ready. Final pieces are the end pieces, which will go just like this. They sit on top of the bottom uh, board. Uh, the inner dimension should be four inches uh, on this. I'll put it this way so you can see how it should go. Four inches uh, wide. So I have a quarter inch deep here, dado. And I'll have a quarter inch deep dado on the other side. So all together, the length of this should be four and a half inches to account for the depth of those of those dados. So I need four pieces of this cut at uh, four and a half inches wide. Okay, so here's the general setup. Um, I'm going to drill holes here, 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 and here to receive a bolt and a wing nut that goes through here that holds all of this together. Of course, the bottom will go in here and it'll uh, sort of keep things squared up and held together as well. So this will make uh, roughly uh, six bars of soap. Um, and you, you pour the stuff here in the mold, let it sit for a while and then slice it. And uh, then you can take the mold apart, obviously, and then you can reuse the mold. Here's the bottom of the box. Uh, material just quarter inch thick MDF plywood and um, as you can see it is the same width as one of these end pieces uh, so that it, it all agrees but um, so all I need to do is cut this to length and I think I want to make it even uh, with the ends of this just for stability all the way across I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so I have this clamped into my drill press, you know, all four pieces at once, all lined up pretty pretty, oriented the same way. But you could do this by clamping it together and just use a drill too if you want. some reason the bottom's sliding in and out a little bit but you know I'm not sure that's a bad thing because you know these molds do have to come apart to secure the ends I use carriage bolts and the pounding you saw was me pounding that uh, that square um, uh, part underneath the shoulder into the wood to sort of secure it um, I figured I would make one go one way and one thread the other way uh, maybe even the, the tension the load whatever but there it is there's one uh, i'll put the other one together make sure they all fit and then we'll sand them and they will be good to go okay and there they are two soap molds that will make uh about six bars each and uh so now 
we get to use them. And you know, you don't have to make them out of material this thick. If you want to adjust the measurements and make it out of thinner material, you can. I have seen um, a similar mold to this at Hobby Lobby that was made with Delrin, you know, nylon or plastic, constructed the same way. But I think it was like three eighths thick or something like that, and it was warped and bending. Uh, so I thought, well, when I make mine, I'm going to make them a little thicker. And honestly, you know, this is a soap mold that should last a millennium <laughs> in case in case somebody wanted it, you know, when I'm gone or whatever. But um, anyway, it was fun making them, and I encourage you to make your own and make your own soap because it's so easy to do, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And you get to reuse, uh, you know, some of the lard that you... Uh, get from cooking bacon and you know pork and stuff like that. So I encourage you to do it This is a peppermint soap and I put what color did you make it? I forgot pink pink. It has a pink color to it. It's kind of hard to see that now um, well, It's still it's still setting up too and the little dark things in there look to me when I put them in there like parsley, but they're peppermint flakes, dried peppermint leaves. And then I crushed up a candy cane and put on top to make it look fun. Now when I take a bath, I'll be sticky. <laughs> <laughs> no, except the soap will wash it away. <laughs> but yeah, I noticed from the heat from the soap has sort of melted the candy a little bit. So there's like a glaze on top. That's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. What we have here, Robert. And this one is E Chips. This is a vanilla coffee soap. And he put a little design on top of his. And he's got coffee grounds on the top. And there's coffee grounds in it. And too. there's coffee grounds inside. And it, this was made with actual coffee mm -hmm. instead of water. Yeah, this is lard soap. Mm -hmm. um, there are other oils in it, but it's primarily lard. Because the nice thing about lard, we're told, is that it makes a really good hard soap bar that doesn't melt away very fast. Uh -huh. So we'll see how it comes out. These have been sitting for about 24 hours. Time to pull them out of the molds. Okay, go for it. Handy dandy dough scraper. Also work good for this. Let's get one on the side here. It's a hard soap already. Watch. There it goes. It's sprung. I'm separated. Okay, good. This one on this side. <clears throat> this is our, well, my first time making soap. We've made like six batches now. Wow. There we <laughs> go. The first batch we made didn't go so great because we used goat milk. Scorched it. Look at that. That's a good looking soap. <laughs> it smells good. Look at this. The um, it looks like the 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 pink food coloring, the red food coloring I put in there to turn it pink, sort of glommed on to little bits of the peppermint leaves, and it turned like a little red halo. That's kind of cool. But it, cause is it from this wood mold? Mm -mm. No. <clears throat> All right, come on out of there. The mold has held together beautifully. Yes, each of you did a great job on the soap molds. Nice hard wood. That, I don't think, with a soap this hard, I don't think that plastic mold we found at Hobby Lobby would have held up as well as this. But yeah, look at that. This is a good looking soap. Look at uh -huh. that. That's cool looking. Yeah, I like it. It smells amazing, Mentos too. Mentos or something where you put it in and it turns red. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's not quite pink in the middle yet. It's still saponifying. But everywhere else where it looks like it's beginning to cure already, it's turned pink. All right. Boy, that soap is, like, very aromatic, the peppermint one. Mm -hmm. It is. You won't be able to smell that one but at all. Yeah. Did you cut that open and it's like, oh, can you smell yours? Mm, not really. I'm not sure the vanilla oil, essential oil, really collected in this very well. It, it's good looking soap. Lots of coffee grounds and stuff in it. It's made with coffee, so that it'll retain that sort of 
milky mocha color. There we go. Love that mold. Nice and tough. Holds together beautifully. Now, how much would you make a mold like that for someone? How much? Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. You know, the that's a funny thing because those <laughs> ones made of Delrin or nylon or whatever it is in, in Hobby Lobby, they were selling for $25 each. They're only a quarter inch thick and they're already beginning to bend. You know, they weren't even used. Brand new and they're beginning to bend before, before it got any use. Um, I don't know. If somebody wanted to buy one of these for me, I'd... I'd probably sell it to them for. I might sell it to them for thirty bucks each. The difference between those and the plastic ones, these will last forever and never warp or bend or lose their shape. But just so you know, in case you want to make this mold, and of course the dimensions are in the description below as well. If you want to make this mold for yourself, for you soap makers. This will hold, uh, this mold is designed to take uh, 36 ounces of oils in your recipe. So 36 ounces of oils, uh, and then of course whatever water lye mixture comes out of, your, um, out of your soap making. But 36 ounces of oils is what this soap mold is designed to hold. <clears throat> I think you did a fantastic job on the soap mold. Thanks. That one got a little bit thick. Yeah. Sometimes each it needs a thicker bar. Let's see. Uh. Boy, that peppermint is like cleaning my nostrils. <laughs> it's making my nose run. Wake up, robber. And there you go. Good job. <clears throat> Vanilla coffee. And peppermint soaps. Let me see. Oh, but it does look good. It does look. It does look good. good. And of course, it's got those coffee grounds in there, so it's an exfoliant. And you know what? I just we got these recipes off the internet, and you could find recipes on the internet. Um, so you know, we're not telling you anything new. I mean, this isn't our invention, but and neither really is the soap mold. Other soap molds have been made like this. But, uh, and by anyway. the way, for those of you who have never made soap before, never, 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 ever use any kind of aluminum pot or pan uh, for this, uh, for soap making, because it using lye and water in aluminum has the same effect that using Drano down your drain does. It creates hydrogen gas, which is explosive, and it's also harmful to you. So. And um, since we used the lard, we as we made uh, more and more different batches, uh, we learned that it's best with the lard to keep it around 90 degrees, maybe yeah. 100 at the most, because <clears throat> the more saturated fats, they saponify more quickly. Yeah, quickly. And the first batches we made were pudding in like... Ten seconds, it yeah, seemed they like. Yeah, trace immediately, and they were very hard yeah. to work with. And now it makes sense on you if you're using goat milk, you better keep that stuff in ice, big time. And we did, did it. we did, but it's still scorched. Egypt never wants to make goat milk soap never. again. What a what a what a hassle! <laughs> it's a hassle. It's not worth it. So that has to sit for about six eight. 10, 12 weeks now or something like that to mature or do a setup or whatever they call it. And then we can use it. But, uh, yeah, fun project. Let me go scrape and clean these up so we can have them ready for another use. Thanks, Robert.